Good morning. I thought today I would come along and share with you some of the new things that I've been playing with. So, first of all, let's move these away and let's look at these. Now, I'm sure I'm not the first one to do this. I'm sure I've not created something wonderful. There must be many of you that have done things like this. I just thought I'd share it today. So, with this whole being locked in and not being able to go shopping and buy all our exciting crafty bits and pieces, I decided to try and use some of the things that I have in ways they weren't necessarily designed to be used. So, for example, I have the, um, I believe it's the Wildflower die set from Tim Holtz. I've just picked two out here. And I do love these, and I cut these out a lot from all sorts of different papers and use them to embellish all sorts of my work. But I thought, how fun would it be to use up some of my many excess book pages so basically what I did was I glued four book pages together I put the die on pushed it through my big shot and I discarded the actual piece that had been cut out and as you can see from the ink lines I started using this as a stencil and I found that on my coffee dyed papers, I was very, very happy with the way that it worked. So I just literally took my ink pad and my dauber and I just went through and I just used it as a stencil. Now, obviously, this is not going to last forever because it's only bits of paper rather than the normal sort of plastic acetate type stencils that we buy. But I thought it was a really good makeshift idea, especially while I was stuck at home and I couldn't buy anything new. So, very simple, beautiful little stencil, works very well. Now, I've used this one probably about six times now, and I think it's at the end of its life. So I was like... Do I really want to discard it and throw away? Because I'm sure there's another use for this. So I thought, I know what I'll do. What if I made it into a tag? So this is my normal sort of tag template. So I very rough, I thought I could very roughly cut around that template. So straighten him up a little bit chop him off to the top and across <clears throat> I hope I'm in frame you can see what I'm doing here although to be honest it's it's not Einstein is it I mean you know anyone can do this and then I'll just cut round There we go. And I have got a tag from the stencil. Now, I don't know about you, but I actually quite like that. Now, I can see, obviously, it's lopsided because I didn't know quite where I was holding my template. So I can just line it up, trim it down. And I feel like that looks like a pretty nice tag. Now, of course, the argument is what I could do now is I'm just inking up the edges because it's habit, isn't it? We ink up the edges of everything. What I could, of course, do now is very easily I could place that onto. Let's see if I can find a bit to hand. Um, mm, that's not a very good bit. bit to, oh. I could very easily place that now onto a patterned paper obviously this is not a very good example but and then stick it down and I would obviously have the pattern coming through or I could keep it really novel although that might weaken it have it like that it might even be nice just to put it onto let's get rid of the scraps some coffee dyed paper and have the white flower come through so it's just a novel little idea that I've come up with that I thought I'd share with you. Although, as I say, I'm sure it's not 
by any means no I'm sure you've all done it you've all been doing this for years compared to me but anyway I like to share and come along and have a bit of a chat so that's one little idea for you but the other thing that I've been playing with is envelopes now I love envelopes I think they are so versatile and obviously we all watch other makers on YouTube and I've seen that an awful lot of people at the moment are doing these um, tucking where you tuck this bit into this bit of another one so I said about decorating up an envelope now this in the main comes from ideas from Artie Mays. But what I've basically done is I've just distressed the envelope with some coffee and some coloured dyes. I've then put some napkin on, had this beautiful rose, a stamp that's part of a kit I believe from Artie Mays. And then I've just used my postage stamps to put on there and the little sort of franking mark that you get i've stamped on airmail here and then on the back i've just put a tim holtz number because i've got that stamp and i thought it was nice some more of the napkin well i thought that was really quite pretty and i was very pleased with that and obviously there's lots more room for bits of laces and things if i wanted to but then as I say, I got to thinking about how lots of people are doing this where you tuck this envelope in here and you make it into <clears throat> like, a, I can't even get it in there now, <laughs> where you make it into like a, there you go, a fold round sort of folio book cover thing that's bad isn't it look at that both of these envelopes are out the same packet and yet they're actually different sizes but anyway um and they you know they use this as a bit of a folio they stick this down and then they decorate inside you've seen that and i thought whilst that's lovely it wasn't really for me i wanted to do something different so what i did was i used big a5 envelopes I used exactly the same principle. So I've coffee stained it. I've put, this one is actually the middle layer of the napkin. And then the top layer of the napkin, one of these pretend stamps, my postage stamp stamps. And then I've just done some um, stamping of words. And there's a little bit of numbering there. And then I've just dashed over some pink and then on the other side, I did exactly the same again, and I've just used a different napkin and the words and coffee to stain the edges and everything. And then I used two layers of the decoupage sealant, so it's nice and shiny and safe and sealed. And I thought, it's only paper, it's not really strong enough, in my opinion, to be a book cover. So what I did was on these bigger envelopes, they open at the end. So I cut some craft card that was exactly that side, size, not side, size, and I slipped it in and I sealed it up. Sealed it up, put that um, doil, uh, not doily, uh, napkin decoupage on the top and sealed it. And then I did exactly the same on another one. You can see it's been sealed there. And obviously I did that side. And then I thought, well, okay, I've got the front and back and it feels nice and sturdy for my book cover. But obviously I need to join these two. So I've simply took a long strip of calico and I actually put two layers. And if you can see on the corner there, I actually put two layers on the inside just to make it a bit firmer. And then I just put the one layer, which is why you can see the pattern through it, on the back, on the outside. And the reason I only put one on the outside is because after I stitch it, I'm gonna put lace over the top. So there will be two on the outside and two on the inside. And I just thought that is quite heavy actually, and that'll make a nice sturdy journal cover for me. I mean, if, I generally use A4 pages, so if I just fold this in half for a minute, 
because that's what would normally happen. Fold that in half and I sort of sit that there. I think that once the tags and tabs and ribbon come out of the side, that is actually the perfect size for a cover. Very simple. The way of, you know, just using the things we use every day, but in a totally different way. So there you go. There's my new book cover and my new tag. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a little bit of fun sharing with you. I'll come back and see you again soon. Take care.